Hey guys, my name is Sam Roscoe, and I'm the Assistant Chief Flight Instructor here at Virtual Horizon Flight Center. Today we'll be talking about the ground school of straight and level flight. Before, but before we can do that, we must understand how the airplane remains airborne. We often use mechanical equipment without completely understanding how it works. Technological ignorance has, a disvan has its advantages, but not while you're up in the air. You don't need a PhD in aerodynamics to be a pilot, but a moderate to decent understanding of why an airplane stays airborne will prove helpful and life-sustaining. That's why this first ground school class is the longest. In order to fly an airplane, you must feel, first fill your brain. This class is the place to start. Forces on planes. These forces are actually the things that push and pull on an airplane in flight. The four forces, lift, weight, thrust, and drag, are present any and every time a plane is airborne. Look at this picture, which shows the action of the four forces. Of course, enormous arrows don't really come from the plane. The arrows do serve to show that what we've got here is a highly competitive new game, a four-way tug-of-war. Your job as a pilot is to manage the resources available in order to balance these forces. Let's see what they're all about. Lift. Lift is the upward acting force created when an airplane's wing moves through the air. Forward movement produces a slight difference in pressure between the wings, upper and lower surfaces. This difference becomes lift. This difference becomes lift. It's lift that keeps an airplane airborne. Weight. Weight is the downward acting force. It's the one force pilots control to some extent by choosing how they load the airplane. With the exception of fuel burn, the airplane's actual weight is difficult to change in flight. Once airborne, you should not be burning cargo or acquiring extra passengers. Unexpected discharge of passengers while in flight is a violation of some FAA rule, so please don't do it. In unaccelerated flight, when the airplane's speed and direction are constant, the opposing forces of lift and weight are in balance. Thrust and drag. Thrust is a forward acting force produced by an airplane engine spun propeller. For the most part, the bigger the engine, meaning more horsepower, the greater the thrust produced and the faster the airplane can fly, up to a point. Forward movement always generates an aerodynamic penalty called drag. Drag pulls rearward on the airplane and is simply the atmosphere's molecular resistance to motion through it. In plain English, it's wind resistance. A few things are free with Mother Nature. Thrust causes the airplane to accelerate, but drag determines its final speed. As the airplane's velocity increases, its drag also increases. Due to the perversity of nature, doubling the airplane's speed actually quadruples the drag. Eventually, the rearward, rearward pull of drag equals the engine's thrust, and a constant speed is attained. This picture shows the results of maximum thrust meeting the equal and rearward pull of drag at this speed in a car. Maintaining a slower speed requires less power, since less drag exists. At any speed less than than the maximum force forward speed of a car, excess thrust, or horsepower, is available for other uses, such as accelerating around other cars. The same is true with air of airplanes. At less than maximum speed in level flight, there's power, or thrust, to spare. Excess thrust can be applied to perform one of aviation's most important maneuvers, the climb. With that being said, I think it's time for you to learn a little bit more about the airplane's flight controls. This picture shows the three imaginary axes of the airplane. One, the vertical axis, or yaw. Two, the longitudinal axis, or roll. And three, lateral axis, or pitch. By use of the flight controls, the airplane can be made to rotate about one or more of these axes. The longitudinal, or long axis, runs through the center line of the airplane from nose to tail. Airplanes roll or bank about their longitudinal axis. A good way to remember which way the longitudinal axis runs is to remember that it's a long, as in longitudinal, a long way from the nose to the tail of an airplane. A sideways pass in football is called a lateral pass. Similarly, the lateral pass runs sideways through the airplane from wingtip to ring wingtip. An airplane's pitch about their lateral axis. The vertical axis, vertical axis of the airplane runs up and down from the cockpit to the belly. Airplanes yaw about their vertical axis. Now we're ready to examine each of the three main flight controls that cause an airplane to move about its axis. Ailerons. Ailerons are the movable surfaces on the outer trailing edges of the wing. Their purpose is to bank the airplane in the direction you want it to turn. When the control wheel is turned to the right, as shown in this picture, the ailerons simultaneously move in opposite directions. The left wing ailerons lowers, increasing the lift on the left wing. 
the right wing aileron raises, decreasing the lift on the right wing. This causes the airplane to bank to the right. When the flight control wheel is turned to the left, as shown in this picture, the wing, the wing aileron raises, decreasing the lift on the left wing. The, white, the right wing aileron lowers, increasing the lift on the right wing. This causes the airplane to bank to the left. Ailerons allow one wing to develop more lift and the other to, to develop less. Differential lift banks the airplane, which tilts the total lifting force in the direction you want to turn. Elevator. The elevator is the movable horizon surface on the rear, rear of the airplane. Its purpose is to pitch the airplane's nose up or down. How the elevator controls the airplane's pitch is the tail moves down because the elevator moves up. What is back pressure? Applying back pressure is another one of those terms that sounds strange to non-pilots. It refers to the action when a pilot pulls back gently on the airplane's control wheel. The elevator control works on the same aer aerodynamic principle as the aileron. Applying back pressure on the control wheel of the airplane, as shown in this picture, deflects the elevator surface upward. Lower pressure is created on the underside of the tail, which moves it downward, and the nose of the airplane pitches up. The airplane in this picture shows what happens when the control wheel is moved forward. The elevator surface, surface moves down, thus creating lower pressure on, on the top side of the tail causes the tail to rise. The nose rotates about the lateral axis in a downward direction. Simply stated, to pitch up, pull the control wheel back. To pitch down, to pitch down, move the control wheel forward. And there's also a third flight control, the rudder, which controls yaw around the vertical axis. We'll discuss this later on. Now that you've acquired a basic idea of how the flight controls work, let's talk about straight and level flight. Straight and level flight. You're about to practice straight and level flight, one of aviation's most fundamental maneuvers. Keep in mind, this is two separate maneuvers. Straight flight means the airplane's nose remains pointed in one direction, and the wings are parallel to the Earth's horizon. Level flight means the airplane doesn't gain or lose altitude. This picture shows what straight and level flight looks like from the left seat where you sit. How to tell you're going straight. Okay, how do you know you're actually flying straight and level? The easiest way to tell is to look over the instrument panel and out the front window, as shown in this picture. It appears that the, top of the that the top portion of the instrument panel is approximately parallel with the Earth's distant horizon. This implies that your wings are not banked, which means you're flying straight ahead and not turning. There is, however, another way to tell if you're flying straight. You can press the hat switch on your joystick. If you look out the left or right window, as shown in this picture, you'll notice the position of each wing relative to the Earth's horizon. In straight flight, both wings should be the same distance above the horizon. Refer to the horizon, not the mountains. Having the right altitude. It's convenient to keep shifting views to the left and to the right, so you'll use the attitude indicator to help maintain straight and level flight. The attitude indicator is located at the top of the six main flight instruments directly in front of you. The attitude indicator is an artificial representation of the real horizon. Just as, it, just as its name suggests, the attitude indicator displays the airplane's attitude, its upward or downward pitch, and the bank the wings make with the horizon. The upper half of the attitude indicator is blue. The bottom half is brown. The thin white line between these colors is the artificial horizon line. Pilots use the attitude indicator when they can't see the Earth's horizon because of restrictions to visibility or when it's inconvenient to look at the wingtips. By moving the joystick to the left, the airplane banks to the left, which dips the left wing downward toward the ground, as shown in this picture. This is how you begin a left turn. Notice that the miniature, orange-winged airplane in the attitude indicator also appear appears to dip its left wing toward the ground. Mechanically speaking, it's really the background of the attitude indicator that moves and creates a picture of the airplane's attitude. Nevertheless, you can always tell which way you're banking by determining which one of the small orange wings in the attitude indicator drops towards the ground. By gently moving the joystick to the right in the same manner just described, the attitude indicator will indicate a right turn. Now the orange winged plane's right wing dips toward the ground, as shown in the picture. Moving the joystick to the right or left until both of the miniature plane's wings are parallel to the artificial horizon line ref returns the joystick to its center position returns the airplane to straight flight, as shown in this picture.
After all, if the wings aren't banked, the airplane isn't turning.